What's up guys, this is Homie from Dota Coach and welcome to episode 2 of Climb the Ladder where I want to share with you my thoughts on how you can improve your game and climb the ladder as a result of it. First of all, I want to thank you guys for the nice comments you've been leaving me. It's really nice seeing that you enjoy my videos and I want to take this opportunity to ask you if you have a suggestion on what I could make a video about next then you can leave that in the comments. I'm very interested in hearing that because right now I'm just making whatever I want and seeing what kind of videos you guys want me to make would be very interesting to me. Alright guys, no more talking, let's get to business here. So in this video I want to talk with you guys about an item that I personally like a lot which is Hem of Dominator. So let's take a look at the item itself first. So what stats it gives and how it got changed in the recent patches. I'm sure you guys all remember patch 7.00 because this was the patch where literally every carry hero got the Hem of Dominator. And the reason for that was because back then it only cost 1800 gold and it gave you insane stats for the money. So it gave you 20 attack speed, it gave you 6 to all stats and it gave you 8 health regeneration. And of course on top of that it also gave you the active but I mean that's not even the point there. It just gave you so many stats for 1800 gold and that is why every hero used to buy it. Of course Icefrog nerfed the item afterwards so he took away some of the all stats that it gave and also gave the dominated creep a gold bounty and now in the latest patch 7.06 we have the latest version of the hem of dominator where they of course changed it so that you no longer need to buy the recipe and now you need to buy the ring of health so as a result the whole item also costs more the item now costs 200,000 million gold the item now costs 2025 gold but let's take a look at this, right? Because I think something very interesting just happened to the item. First of all, I want to point out that almost every item you need to buy for Helm Dominator can be bought in the side shop. The only thing you need to buy at home is an ironwood branch and a recipe for the headdress. The ironwood branch is something that the carries usually get as starting items. As a result, the only thing you kind of need to buy in base is the recipe for headdress but the rest of it the gloves of haste as well as the ring of region can be bought in the side shop and if you ask me having an item that can be finished in the side shop is a very very good thing for carries right now because it means that they can be strong continuously and they do not need to use the courier and wait for the item to reach them I played a few games with Helm of Dominator and I could usually finish it before 5 minutes which is pretty damn good if you ask me. So let us take a look at the stats it gives you now. Right now it gives you 2 to all stats, it gives you 10 HP regen per second and also gives you 20 attack speed, of course 10 of which are in the aura, right? If you ask me, these stats are just insane, still. Because 10 HP regen a second is so much for a carry hero, especially when you can finish the item early and comfortably from your side shop. It pretty much means that you have a constant tango running. I think most heroes that you would face in the offlane as a carry cannot even do enough damage that you couldn't regen back with your Helm of Dominator. I think if you are up against a Darkseer, you no longer have to worry about his Iron Shells because you can simply just regen back the damage it does to you in a matter of like 30 seconds or something. Same goes if you ask me with Legion Commander. Of course Legion Commander is a very strong hero who can kind of man fight you early so it's a little bit problematic but you can actually regen the damage back from her overwhelming odds. So that is pretty damn good. Of course on top of this it gives you 2 to all stats which might not sound like a lot but it's still something, considering it's an item that only costs 2000 and you want to have it in your inventory for pretty much the whole game. Only when you get 6 slotted then you're going to probably sell it. Having 2 to all stats at all times is pretty damn good, right? And keep in mind that you also get an aura and you give all your teammates 10 health regeneration. And this will just make the offlaner's life pretty damn hard now, won't it? But now, we have talked about the stats now, but we haven't even talked about the elephant in the room here, which is... The dominate ability. Dominate ability as you guys will know allows you to dominate a creep and control it and the great thing about this is of course that you get the auras from the creeps and you can also use spells from the creeps you dominate and so on and so forth. Now this was also changed a little bit. It used to be quite different. These days if you dominate a creep it immediately gets 1400 health and if it has more health than that then it gets its own health and it has a set movement speed of 425 so that is pretty damn quick now of course something to keep in mind is i think many people forget this is that the dominated creep gives you a gold bounty of 125 
which is something you certainly do not just want to give your enemy away if you could avoid it. So now you're wondering, okay, which creeps do I have to use with Hammer of Dominator? Now I'm about to tell you this, so there's a huge amount of neutral creeps that we can dominate with the Helm of Dominator and this makes the ability quite complex but also super flexible and this is why I love it. So overall there are 5 different things you want to be doing with your Helm of Dominator. So the number one thing you want to do is buffing yourself with the Helm of Dominator. So the most common one is of course the Alpha Wolf. It has two auras for you, uh, the first one being Critical Strike. This one gives you 20% chance to do 200% damage on an attack. Someone did the math and apparently this increases your damage output by about 20%, so that's that. And he also has an aura called Pack Leader's Aura and this one gives you a 30% bonus on your base damage. So it won't give you a bonus on your bonus damage from items like MKB or something it will only increase the base damage that you get from your primary attribute. But that being said, this is still a super good aura and the Alpha Wolf is of course one of the best creeps to get because it increases your damage output and this is exactly what the carry wants, right? There are a bunch of other good auras too. Immunity comes to mind the Wild Wing Camp. So the, the big Wild Wing has a toughness aura which gives each creep and unit in its vicinity three extra armor. And this creep is best if you want to push a tower or something, but if you just want armor for yourself, then there's an even better, better option for you, which is the Augur Frost Mage. The Augur Frost Mage has an active ability which you have to use on yourself uh, that gives you eight armor. And if someone attacks you while you have this buff, they will have their movement speed and attack speed slowed. Eight armor is of course a huge amount for a carry. So I really like getting the Augur Frost Mage I think it's good throughout the whole game, it's good at the start of the game and also at the end of the game and it's of course good if you want the extra armor. A side note here is you can also cast this on creeps but of course it will be a little bit less effective than the wide wing for pushing. So finally we also have a new aura which is on the Halber Smasher which is the big red guy in the red guy camp and he got a new aura which is called Swiftness Aura and this one gives you 15 extra attack speed and of course every unit that is close to him. So this is also quite good for pushing because it will also increase the attack speed from creeps. Of course it doesn't make a big difference in terms of damage but it's still good and for yourself this effectively increases the attack speed that you get from Hell of Dominator to 35 which is quite a lot right? Finally we have the Satyr Tormentor. He also has an aura called Unholy Aura and this aura gives each unit in its vicinity 6 health regen. This used to be a very good creep to get, but these days it's not really anymore because your Helm of Dominator already gives you 10 health regen. But it's still a good creep if you're like super low in HP, you want to get more health regen to regen up, then this one's a good creep to get because you will just regen back up in like 2 minutes or something. There are a few lesser known auras in the game, not many people know these auras. The first one uh, comes from the small camp and it's from the Cobalt Foreman and he has a speed aura. This aura gives each unit in the vicinity 12% extra movement speed. So if you're a hero with 300 movement speed, then this guy will give you about 30 movement speed on top of that, which is almost as much as boots, so it's quite good. If you ever need extra movement speed, then you can always get this creep. And there's also a creep that is very interesting, which is the Hill Troll Priest, which is also from the small camp. And this guy actually has a mana aura. This aura gives you 3 mana region to each unit in its vicinity. So if you ever low on mana, then this creep is also very nice to get and just have it run after you for a few minutes to get back on mana, right? Of course this guy also has a heal ability but it's not very good. Um, you can put it on autocast and it will heal random units in its vicinity but of course it's not very good but it can make the difference in a fight so you should always keep that in mind. Now this is buffing, right? This is the most commonly used thing but there's something else you can do which is scouting. Scouting is a super important thing to do with your Helm of Dominator. Helm of Dominator gives you a unit that you can control yourself and that will give you vision. So it's basically like a moving ward um, which you can use to scout out gangs that are coming, to scout someone if you're like pushing a tower or something to see if they're defending. You can use it to check like hiding spots, you can use it to check Russian later. Uh, it's just a super good thing to scout with your creeps. Now the number three thing you want to do with the of Dominator is stacking. So of course, if you have a creep that can attack and run around wherever it wants, then you can also stack neutral cramps with it. And this is the reason why a lot of heroes get this item, such as Luna or Sven back in the days. And so yeah, if you don't know how to stack a camp, then I suggest you to go to my channel and watch my videos on that. I've made a video for both Dire and, Ra and Radiant for how to stack camps. So if you watch this video, you will know how to make your own 6 and 7 stacks, which are by the way actually doable if you have a Helm of Dominator, because you don't actually have to spend the time to get those stacks. Now number four thing you want to do with your Helm of Dominator is 
of course, using its spells. And this is where we have a lot of creeps to choose from. The most common creep you are using for this is of course the Centaur Conqueror. So the Centaur Conqueror is the larger one of the Centaur creeps, the blue dude. And he has an ability called War Stomp, which is a 250 AoE, 25 damage, 2 seconds stun. And the interesting thing about this spell is that it's only dispellable with strong dispels. This cannot be dispelled by Lotus Orb or something, it can only be dispelled by strong dispels such as Oracle's Ultimate or something like that. So this is of course the best ability if you want to fight because it's a 2 second stun and the AoE is quite good so you can hit like 2 heroes with it. If you want a team fight, then you just get this creep. There's no reason to get another creep. We have more options for stunning people. Um, the troll camp has an ability on the dark troll summoner called ensnare. Uh, this one is not a stun but it immobilizes the unit and the unit can still attack and use abilities. But it's a 1.75 second ensnare and it's quite good for catching people off guard because, and here's the interesting thing, this does not have a projectile. All the abilities that can stun from a distance have been nerfed in the past, such as uh, Rod of Atos or Dragon Knight's stun in his dragon form. And this is one of the only spells that are left that don't actually have a projectile, that apply their immobilization immediately. So that's quite good, right? So this creep is super good for um, ganking, because it can initiate a gank. And what I also like doing with this unit is, I just send it after my allies. So if I have a roamer, like Monkey King, or like a, I don't know, like a CM who's roaming a little bit, then I I just like having my Dark Troll Summoner follow on my allies and just help them with the gank while I'm farming. So now we have a bunch of creeps that are great for farming and those are the White Wing, the Hellbear Smasher and the Large Sad Turk Tormentor. These, these guys have all some kind of AoE damage ability and this allows them to farm. The reason why I love getting these creeps is when I die then I can just go farm with these creeps while I'm dead. Effectively removing the time where I usually would not be farming and getting a whole bunch of extra gold. Of course, the Satyr and the Hellbear are best for this because they have an instant damage ability, but the Wild Wings Tornado can be used to actually farm neutral creeps in the jungle, and he could even farm a stack if you have one. These three creeps are super good. They're of course also good for fighting because they just do a bunch of damage, which is always great. So we have a bunch of more spells. There is the Golem Camp. They have an ability called Hurl Border, which is a projectile that you launch on your enemy and it will stun for 0.6 seconds and do 125 damage. This is of course also a quite good ability. You can maybe initiate a gank with it, but it's great for disrupting channeling abilities and so on. And now these guys have an ability that's often forgotten, which is called Short Split, which means if one of those guys dies, then two more shard golems will appear and they will both also have the hurl border ability and i barely see someone use this whenever i see someone use the mud golem i just see them die with it and forget about the two creeps they get afterwards so you, de you definitely want to use the two more hurl borders if you can now finally we have another very strong creep which is called satyr banisher which is the tiny ass creep in the satyr camp and he has an ability called Purge. If you use Purge on an ally, this will remove debuffs. And if you use this on an enemy, this will remove buffs and also slow them. And the slow will become worse each second. The great thing about this ability is that it only has a 3 second cooldown. So I love getting the Satyr Banisher when the enemy has a lot of very good stuns. Because I can just remove the stun. And it's also great if you have gankable enemies that don't really have mobility spells. Because you can just slow them to death with Purge as well. Also keep in mind that this actually removes buffs from the enemy. So if they have a lich or something, you remove their ice armor. And there's a whole bunch of things you can remove with this. So this is a great, great unit that you should never forget about. Okay, so these are pretty much all the useful creeps you can get. Of course, you still have the harpies that have chain lightning. But these spells are not actually very good, if you ask me. So yeah, these are the main creeps you want to get for using spells. And this brings us to our final thing that you want to do with your Animal Dominator, which is fighting. If you're in a team fight and you have the centaur and you have used the stun, then the centaur is not really good for anything anymore, so I just like to fight with it. So use the attack move on the enemy and just do the little bit of extra damage and forget about the creep. There's not really a point in actually microing it because this will probably make your micro on your own hero worse. Same goes when you're just farming a camp and you don't actually need to be like stacking or like scouting with your creep then you can always just use it to also attack the creeps. This will effectively increase the damage that you deal with Hammer of Dominator and kind of increase your speed a little bit. So these are the five things you want to do. In the course of a game, I usually end up doing each of those five things at one point. Of course, you always have the ability to switch your creep. This makes the Hammer of Dominator super flexible and this is why I love it. Of course, something to keep in mind here is that it is quite random which creeps you get. So if you want to get an Alpha Wolf, sometimes you just don't get one and you have to get something else. But you can usually get what you want. 
All right, this has been it for episode two of Climb the Ladder. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys are going to use your Helm of Dominators in a good way and start doing some of them sick plays over there. <laughs> All right, uh, if you enjoyed the video, please leave me a thumbs up. It would be very great. Also, if you got something to say like you are bad and a noob, then please leave me a comment. I really like reading your comments. And yeah, I'll see you next time.